Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing the end of year wrap up, which is going to include all the books I read in November and December. Uh, I didn't do a November wrap up, I was going through a little bit of a funk with YouTube and people annoying me. <laughs> so I didn't do a November wrap up, so I'm going to do November and December in this video, so an end of year wrap up. We have a lot of books to talk about today. Um, I thought I was going to like be as quick as I possibly can with this video because I know that people don't watch the entirety of wrap ups anyway, let alone when you take an hour or so, but I'm I'm not going to rush through them. I have a lot of thoughts on these books, so I understand if you don't watch the whole thing. The first book that I read was The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I was excited to read this because everybody was going through like a Christina Lauren phase, I think, I think the, in the holidays or something had just come out. So I was like, I don't want to read that, but I do want to read The Unhoneymooners. And so I did. I gave this a five stars. This is about a man and a woman who can't stand each other and they are be about to become brother and a sister in law um, because her sister and his brother are marrying each other. They do get married and then at the wedding they all get food poisoning except for the sister and the brother who hate each other. So they end up taking the honeymoon and on this honeymoon they fall in love. It is a uh, enemies to lovers, which is one of my favorite tropes. And we, I, I just, I just find it so satisfying. I love an enemies to lovers. There's always so much tension and you just want them to be together so much. And there's always so much drama and I just like, oh, I can't cope. I love the storyline with the actual husband and wife and where that went. I really enjoyed that. And I really liked where our couple went. I loved it, even though they were enemies, they were never like cruel. It's really hard when you see they do something so bad that that causes them to be enemies that you find it hard then to ship them together when they are falling in love. So I'm really, really glad that that was not the case for this and that I ended up actually enjoying the way they progressed and the fact that it was all a, it was all a bit annoying because it was all like a miscommunication. And I cannot stand that. But in this fluffy romance, I just felt so happy. I sat and listened to it on audiobook all in one sitting. And um, I have no regrets. <laughs> so I was like using that as a palette cleanser um, between Horrorthon and then going into a fantasy. Um, so I don't have much to say on it, but the next fantasy that I read then after that was Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. Now, I have waited too long to talk about my thoughts on this book. This was incredible. Um, this is a fantasy based in Italy where two twins, I think her name is Victoria and Amelia. Amelia and Vittoria. Vittoria is murdered and Amelia finds her body and over it is standing Wrath. The Prince of Wrath, he is a demon from hell. And um, she immediately thinks he killed her, but then they go on a journey together to find the real killer. And they both have their own motives to discovering this killer. I adored this. It has Crescent City vibes, which is why I picked it up because my friend Jade told me this. Um, she actually sent this to me as well. And uh, I completely agree. It is Crescent City vibes. If you did not like Crescent City, you might not like this. If you did like Crescent City, then you probably will like this. As you can see, I decided to tab and I did go crazy. I used three packets of tabs on this bad boy. It was a lot, but I absolutely adored this book it is in my best books of the year 2020 it just missed out on first place to crescent city ironically um but i absolutely adore this i adore where it went my only criticism is which i think i said in that video is that you are given this most beautiful map okay beautiful you never go to this world i'm assuming you will in the future books because this is the start of a series but you did not in this book oh another complaint i do have is this is not long enough this is a 300 page book, which is not long for a fantasy, especially for a starter fantasy series. But there wasn't a lot of world building because I assume that's gonna be in the future books. Um, but it wasn't quite enough for me. I wanted more. I wanted to see this world, even if we had to pop into Wrath's perspective to see this world, I would have really appreciated just to get a glimpse of it because that excited me after seeing the map. Um, but I am so, so ready for the next instalment in the series, which hasn't even been confirmed yet. But I've seen November 2021 flying around. I don't think that's confirmed. Um, 
but I need that book. I need it now. Um, <laughs> write it faster <laughs> because I am obsessed. This was so good. I cannot wait to reread it. Wrath was such a good character. Amelia was a, such a good character, both with great development. I would have liked to have seen a little, not less on the romance. The romance was fabulous. I shipped the romance. But my problem was it was kind of like taking over the focus of the story instead of the revenge plot or the family plot because Amelia is a witch. And I feel like that just didn't come into play enough. The fact that she was a witch, it kind of just was in the background. She was like a normal human girl. And I would love to have seen that play more of a part, but I do think that could definitely come into play in the future series a lot more than it did here. If you have not picked this up, I highly encourage you to. Um, I think this is a book that any YA fantasy reader will love. I have nothing more to say. Please read it and let me know your thoughts. And if you don't like it, just don't tell me. I can't take it. The next book that I read, you can actually go and see the next few books that I read in my 24 hour readathon vlog, where I read a bunch of books in 24 hours. And one of those books was Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Um, I give this a four star. I think I gave it a 3.5. I would actually lower my rating now. I think I'd give it a three. It was just okay. Um, it's about Eleanor Oliphant who struggles with depression and uh, quite a lot of mental illnesses to be fair, trauma, PTSD. And we just see her living her life and growing as a person. Um, I really enjoyed this book. It was a nice quick read. My problem is I struggle so hard with secondhand embarrassment. I've never embarrassed myself. When if something embarrassing happens to me, I'm like, I laugh it off. But secondhand embarrassment is a real problem of mine. And in this book, she has really bad social skills. Um, uh, of course, it's because of something which you will read in the book. She's not to be blamed or anything. But I was constantly suffering from secondhand embarrassment reading this. Um, to the point where it did ruin my enjoyment for a lot of the book which is so stupid to say like the whole point of the book is that she's socially awkward but i am glad that i read it i can see why so many people love it i can see why it was such a good bestseller if you have not read it then i would highly encourage you to do so it is an easy read but yeah i think i would lower my rating now from a four to a three in that vlog i also finished off the selection series by reading the crown and the air well it goes the air and then the crown um, they're really short reads, especially The Crown. I read the Saxon series earlier this year and gave all three A5 stars. This is based on a new character that we see, um, I won't say who she is, spoilers for the first three, um, and we see her going through a new selection. Um, but it's like gender swapped, so instead of it being women fighting for a man, it is men fighting for a woman. Uh, I really enjoy this. I gave it a four star, but both of them, I gave them four stars and grouping them together. They were not as good as the first three by, by any means. The first three are elite, once again, in my best books of 2020. Um, but these were not quite there. I didn't like the character. She was like a horrible, gross person at the beginning. And I think she was supposed to have growth, but it wasn't real growth. It was clearly very surface level growth and nothing actually changed um, to the point where her own family turned against her at times. And I was like, yeah, because you're horrible. And then she victimized her. She was like, I'm, I'm the victim. They you know, were like, no, you're just a horrible person. So it really did make me struggle to connect with her. Is the lighting constantly changing? It is, isn't it? I'm sorry. What? It, stop that. <laughs> anyway, that that is annoying. Oh, no. What am I supposed to do now? Okay. Okay, I think I fixed it. I, yeah. It was hard to read when I hate her, but I did really enjoy them. Four star, great end to the series. I also started reading and then finished off afterwards in that vlog. The Deep by River Solomon, uh, David Dig David Diggs, William Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes. Um, this is a book about, it's a fantasy about African women who, African slave women who were thrown overboard from slave ships who were pregnant and they obviously drowned and then from their bodies came their children as mermaids. Now this is a very short, very peculiar, very weird book. Um, obviously there was a little talk of race in there which I enjoyed the discussion. It's sapphic which I really enjoyed. It um, 
does break a lot of stereotypes. I really enjoyed that part of it. But all in all, I did not understand this book. And I think it tried to be so obscure. And it was like thinking to itself, you know, if I can be weird enough, people won't understand it and give me a five star. And to be honest, I see how that works. Um, I enjoyed it. I gave it a three star. I thought it was fine. You know, I, really, I, I liked reading it. But there were some weird things that I just thought were necessary. And I was a bit like, eh, you're just doing that for the sake of doing it. Do you know what I mean? But the writing style is beautiful. I really enjoy the writing. Um, it really draws you in. And the world building, not the world building, because it's just the ocean. But being in the setting of the ocean was really, really nice. And I enjoyed where it went. I just think that it tried a little hard, too hard to be obscure to give it a better rating. But a three is still really good. And if you come across this book I wouldn't pay full price for it because it's 150 pages but if you come across it somewhere then I would definitely recommend giving that a whirl. I then read The Unadoptables by Hannah Tuck which was a net galley read for me. Ooh, this was during Galleathon and I enjoyed the story. I gave it a three stars. It is about a bunch of children who live in an orphanage and go on an adventure to find their real family. Um, this book is great. It's about a newfound family, about found family, about children using their resources to live. It's kind of like series of unfortunate event vibes. My problem is it's kind of offensive. First of all, the term unadoptables is really sad because if you're in an adoptive system, I don't want anyone thinking they're unadoptable. And the des the descriptions of why people were unadoptable was gross like at one point it was saying about how people are different and like briefly discussing like disability and looking different and not being pretty enough and because of that they were not adoptable and it wasn't like a lesson thing where at the end you realize oh you're not unadoptable after all it was like a genuine thought and i would hate for a child to read this and either be taught that they themselves are unadoptable or think that people in adoptive systems are unadoptable. It was like a really, really bad thing to, to be writing about. So I gave it a three star because I really enjoyed the story, but I do not encourage anybody to read this as a child. If you as a grown up would like to read that book, go for it. But I would never buy that for another, for a child, like what it's meant to be, because it is a children's book. I would never. I don't think it's acceptable. I don't think those things that were written were very good. I read one review that came from a mother of adoptive children and she was sent this book to review and she was heartbroken at the way that they were described and how she'd seen a lot of children in the adoptive system. I think she was either a foster mother or an adoptive mother, I'm not sure, but she'd seen a lot of pet, um, children in this system and she said about the damage this book could do and I, f I really like, I, I could completely see why um so i do not promote you read this book but i did read it it was a good book not good for children who are susceptible to understanding these things i then read these violent delights by Catherine lauren i gave my copy away in a trade um but i was sent an arc of this by harper so thank you harper i really really enjoyed this i gave it a four stars and it was so good it's about a school where there is a sor it's not like a sorority it's a secret club called the red hearts or the red court red hearts i don't know um but basically they do favors in return for favors um and these favors can be called upon for anything and our protagonist her sister was left paralyzed after the red court pulled a prank or something on her um and so our protagonist wants to get into the red court and take them out from the inside and we follow her journey going through that the book is really really good i love a school a school based setting for me it just they're a lot of fun they take me back um and they're really easy to read and this was the same i really enjoyed the intrigue it was so fast paced i loved all the characters i love she, at one point she kind of lost herself and she had this best friend and he was like trying to keep her on the straight and narrow and i really enjoyed that storyline and how he dealt with that um all the characters were really good i really enjoyed the book it was it was really really interesting and i did not expect it to take the path that it did take 
Um, if this book has interested you at all, I would definitely plan to find you pick it up. It does live up to the expectations and I really enjoyed what they did with it. So I, I would read that again. I might get myself a final copy at some point. I then read The Island by C.L. Taylor. I have not read from C.L. Taylor before. Uh, I do own one of their books on my Kindle, The Strangers or something, but I have not read it. And so I didn't know what to expect from this. And the first paragraph, uh, the first chapter I, I hated, it was, wasn't was on the island yet and I really did not like it. And I thought, oh no, this is not gonna be good. Then we got to the island and I really enjoyed the story. Um, it was so predictable. Like if you use your brain cells, you'd probably guess it from the second chapter. If you use your brain cells. I can't believe I just said that. Not <laughs> Like if you really thought about it, you could probably guess, you know? Um, but I, I didn't, I don't think, don't guess very often. So I didn't guess it until like 30% of the way through. But then it was so obvious to me that I didn't even have to try and guess. It was just there. And I was like, well, now I, I'm pretty sure I know who it is. But that didn't take away from the story because knowing who it was, people, basically stuff is happening on this island. I did think it was going to be like people dying like in Agatha Christie style. It was not. So I wasn't disappointed, but I was a bit like, oh, okay. So it's different to what I expected. The ending, the like wrapping up of everything was completely different to what I expected. It took a completely different turn. Um, I was not prepared and I loved it. I thought this book was so much more than I expected and so much better and had I knew it had potential but this really carried out for me and I'm really glad I read it and if it appeals to you at all go for it it is very YA like there are some like you know it is older YA in terms of the content but it at times it felt very YA and I was like I wish this was adult but that's with a lot of books for me so if you like YA thrillers you probably will really like this the next book that I read was The Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead um, this is my first time reading this series and it is about an academy for vampires. I was hoping I would love it because when I was younger vampire academy kind of books like House of Night series were my favourite of all time and I, I, I have not watched the film of this, I had not read the books of this so I wanted to get into it. I gave it a 2.5 which it's not bad rating that's not like a bad book it is just a this wasn't what i wanted it to be this wasn't as good as i hope but it, it didn't hold up first of all i adored the vampire system there are different vampires in here of different levels and they do different things love that it brought like a whole new depth i really really enjoyed that but i don't think it was explored very much in this book this is only the first book in the series i think that'll come into play more in the future and that excites me, I am ready for that. Um, but in this story, it was a lot of setup. It was a lot of friendship building. And I was bored and I didn't care. Um, for such a short book, it took me too long to get through. I thought that some of it was problematic, but I can understand it was written at a time when every book was problematic, you know, Twilight exists. And so I'm, I'm not like, holding a grudge against that but a lot of it was very problematic there is like a relationship in here that's clearly about to start between a student and a mentor it's not a teacher but it is a mentor and the age difference is illegal <laughs> and it's kind of gross and I think you're supposed to ship it and maybe as a 14 year old not understanding the implications of that relationship I would have but I do not now, knowing the problems amongst that relationship. It made me feel very queasy. And I'm going to struggle to ship that if it continues in the next few books. Um, so yeah, that's the problem, is going in with the older brain, not like I would have when I was younger. Um, I do want to watch the film, but I do want to read the books first in case the books spoil the film or I guess the film spoils the books obviously which it, I'm sure it will but I mean more than the first book I am continuing with the series I think as of right now it's not like a priority book for me to buy the next one Frostbite but it, it is something that I want to buy at some point this year and finish I actually want to if I do decide to continue the series I want to finish every series this year so I will have to finish it this year if that is the case but, 
but I'm thinking it's going to get better. But my main problem was the problematic side of it that little old me wouldn't have noticed if I'd read this as I was younger. But I understand why people love it. I completely get it. If I'd read this when I was younger and then revisited it, I'm sure I'd have loved it as well. Um, and I wanted to love it. And I'm sorry I didn't. The next book that I read was A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the second book in the A Curse So Dark and Lonely series. I think it's the Curse Breaker series, but I always call it by the first book. Um, this follow the second book follows Grey after the events of the first book. We only get Ren and Harper's POV twice, the first chapter and the last chapter. And I'm so mad at this book. I gave it a three star. Um, but I'm mad. I'm really mad. Uh, the book was fine. The events of the book was fine. I enjoyed it while I was reading it. And then when I finished it, I was like, hang on a minute. No, I hated this book, even though I thought I'd liked it. <laughs> I don't know how to say anything without spoiling it, but all I'll say is Harper is a completely different person in this book. In the first book, she is confident and strong and powerful. In this book, she is weak. She is like this woman that only obeys men. I am so angry at the way she was done in this book. Ugh, furious. I like the the pro. Uh, I like the way that they develop Grey. Grey was really well developed in this. I liked seeing the inside of his head because we didn't see his POV in the first book, so that was enjoyable to me. But I, I never liked Ren in the first book, so the Ren thing doesn't bother me at all in this book. But the Harper thing does. I am so angry. The romance in this book, I'm not going to say anything, is not... <sighs> Without spoiling anything, there is a romance in this book. And for those of you who have read it, I'm angry about it because it's not what I want to end this series with. So I'm hoping that changes. I like the bringing in of the other city because they're bringing in the other, the other, it's not a city is it, it's like the other kingdom kind of thing. They, they were brought into it in this book, I enjoyed seeing that but it did just feel like they journeyed from one place to this place, took them half the book, well no, three quarters of the book, no, here's where it went, it went from, we saw a journey here to here, very short, then we saw a journey from here to here, very long, three quarters of the book, just for them to journey back over here. Why did I read the same journey three times? Why? I am so upset. Clearly I still enjoyed it. I gave it a three star. The book is great to read. But when you reflect on it at the end, I'm mad. <laughs> and I was ranting to a lot of people who have already read this book. <laughs> oh, I feel like this is really like controversial opinion time on this one. Um, I can understand why you all love it. I do. I just, I think I thought too deeply into it once I was done and then it ruined things for me and I shouldn't have thought so deeply. Let me know if you like this book um, when you read it and how you think it impacted the first book. I would actually be really interested to know. I then read The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is my second attempt at reading this as I had started reading it in August and got halfway. I put it down and picked it back up this month and started again from the beginning, not this month, November, picked it up and started again from the beginning. I give this a four stars, maybe, yeah, no, four star, not a 4.5. This is about the 1920s, yeah, 1920s New York City following Evie who has powers and her and her friends also have powers, meet up and defeat demons and ghouls. I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed it. I did not expect it to be so scary and so spooky for a YA, it is really, really scary. Like, I'm assuming this is YA. It definitely feels YA, but I wouldn't, I would never let my little sister read this. Jeez, she'd probably have nightmares for months. <laughs> but I loved it, and I'm so excited to read the second book in the series because I've heard that that one's probably the best from a lot of people. Um, but I love this. I think it's so unique. I think the writing is amazing. I cannot decide if I love or hate Evie. She's so annoying and like I can't stand her, but I also love her. She's an amazing protagonist and some, but sometimes I wanna punch her, you know? I think that's good writing. I think that's a talent. I understand people's love for this book. I am now on the hype train. I wanted to give it a five star, but there are just sub times in this book where you just think, oh my God, move on. This is slow. Because it, it is a long, long book. It's like 500 odd pages. 
and that's just too long sometimes but the next book's 100 pages longer so be prepared i suppose very excited about this very glad i'm finally reading it the next book that i read was the space between worlds by micaiah johnson this is a sci-fi now if you have watched my channel at all you will know i don't read sci-fi every sci-fi i read i don't like so why do i keep reading it not sure but this i really really wanted to read and the payoff was amazing it is about a, a society where they have developed the ability to jump between parallel universes and different worlds um, but you can only go to worlds that you are dead in. So our protagonist, I cannot remember her name, Kara is somebody who is dead on the majority of the universes except for eight. And so she can jump through a lot of worlds and so she is like the main jumper for this company. And one day she goes to a world where she finds out that things are what they seem. I don't want to say anymore. This book was really good with twists and turns that I feel like you should go in as knowing as little as you possibly can um because you will you will benefit from that the most i really enjoyed it i gave this a four star i think that the payoff was really really good a lot of it was the reason it wasn't a five star was probably because of the use of sci-fi language that i don't understand but that's a that's a me problem but of course my rating system is a personal rating system if you were into sci-fi you will probably adore this it's not heavy sci-fi it is really good for beginners i understood a majority of what was said in this book I feel like it was more like a fantasy with sci-fi elements. I really, really loved it. If you are trying to get into sci-fi or you struggle with sci-fi but you want to read some more, I re definitely recommend this book. I think that this would be the perfect route to go down with that because it worked for me. I then did a reread of Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson because as you will see in the rest of this video, I did read the other two as well. I'm buddy reading the entire series with Lauren. We've just finished it yesterday. Um, and I, I, I wanted to reread this because I'd forgotten so much about this because I read it in August, I think. And I will say for a start, the, this is very forgettable. I've forgotten everything that happened within just six months, like everything. But this is based at a school called the Ellingham Academy. And we follow Stevie Bell on her journey to discovering, to trying to solve the murder that happened in the 1800s, I believe. No, sorry, not 1800s. What am I talking about? 1936, a murder happened where Mr. Ellingham's wife and daughter and a student went missing, were kidnapped. Two were found dead and his daughter was never found. And she has gone there to solve that murder and the, or the kidnapping. And then while she is there, a murder happens. So we're seeing a dual timeline of Stevie solving a murder and past murder and a current murder and i really really loved the dynamic and i loved the switch of timelines i loved both timelines equally in this story there wasn't one that i thought was boring or one that i preferred i genuinely loved the entire thing i've given it a 4.5 this entire series i've read in one sitting every single book twice i read this it was listened to in one sitting then remaining two that i'm going to show you they were both read in one sitting it's like this book is just so easy and quick to read that you you don't need to separate it and the audiobooks are like 10 hours long so i listen on 2.5 speed so it's less than five hours i really really enjoyed this i really enjoyed the reread it was really good seeing all the things that i i didn't remember much but the things that i remembered were hints were really enjoyable to read the setting of this book is incredible ellingham academy is like in the middle of this woodland um, where no cars can get to it so which just adds to the suspense my only complaint for why this is not a five star and i've said it multiple times is i wish this was adult i know it's very hard to make adult follow teenagers in a school it pretty much doesn't happen that's why it's ya but i would love to have this to have had adult themes and been really scary because when bodies are found i would love to have had like gross descriptions of them and stuff i don't know why i just think this book would have been a lot scarier with it and i would love to have been scared the way that i was scared reading the diviners which was also about children, not children, but teenagers. So I feel like it could have been done very well, even if it stuck with YA, I just would like to have had darker themes. But 4.5, incredible, one of the best series I've read. I then read Twas the Night Before Christmas, which is a poem. I didn't know it was a poem. Maybe I'm dumb, well I am dumb, we all know this, but like, I was reading it on the Kindle and then it was like done and I was like, oh, okay 
and I'd already marked it as currently reading on Goodreads. So I was like, okay, I would never normally mark a poem as complete on Goodreads. <laughs> I only do full length novels. So I was like, oops, I've marked it a four star. You don't need to know anymore. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm telling you. I then read Hush Hush by Lucia Franco. This is my first ever smut that I have read, which I was a bit annoyed at myself because I wanted to do a video reading smut for the first time. But basically, I got caught up in a hype <laughs> after watching Make of Mary. She started doing booktube videos a while ago, and she reads a lot of smut. And this is one of her favourites. It follows this woman who, basically her friend is a, a, an escort. Is it? I can't remember if that's the term they use, but she's an escort. And she gets paid a lot of money to be an escort, as I'm sure you do. And so she says, like, you got to look after your grandma and you got to pay for uni, like, or school. Join me. So she becomes an escort. And in the doing so, she meets this man. And he kind of becomes a little bit obsessed with her. She really likes him. But she realises she can't a client. So it's following their journey of loving each other while feeling like it's like a forbidden romance basically yeah it's a forbidden romance and it was really enjoyable to read i gave it a five stars <laughs> i think my review was like yeah i'm giving this five stars mind your own business it was good and it was good i um <laughs> i felt like a bit like thing like can i really mark this five stars and i was like of course i can Okay, it's smart, it's not to everyone's taste, but it was good. And the sex scenes weren't like grotesque. Uh, I thought it was really, really good. I really liked the romance, I really liked the storyline. I liked that it wasn't just about smut, there was also actually a storyline to it. I really, really enjoyed that. So that's exciting. I'm gonna be buying the novella, say yes yeah, soon, so I can read that like extra part. <laughs> but if you have not read that yet and you're, that's your kind of thing, do, do go read it. I think it's one of the most popular smuts that people know of. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of it before, but it was good. I then read the like first small instalment of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Um, they were on Amazon Prime for free, like all eight editions or something. So I've downloaded them all. I've only read the first one so far, um, but I really enjoyed reading it. It was really easy on my phone. You could, you could like, zoom in on the Kindle app and stuff. So I just read it real quick. Uh, I do watch the TV show. I'm not completely caught up on it. I'm like torn on the TV show, whether I like it or not. Um, but it was nice because this this one installment was like a prequel to the show obviously these were written first i'm not saying the show is canon or anything but i like i've read, watched the show i've not read the books or the graphic novels oh my god i'm just rambling now i'm scared of people shouting at me <laughs> but what we saw in this installment was prior to what the show is based on so i really enjoyed seeing um what happened because it was like about sabrina's parents and what happened to them because obviously we don't know that in the show and I really enjoyed reading that it was just like a, it was just a really fast read basically and I enjoyed reading it I enjoyed seeing a little bit of extra about the show getting that little bit of extra knowledge it was creepy and freaky and very graphic loved it what did I give that a four star it was good it was good for what it was I then read Go Deep in the by Rilsey Adams this is kind of doing the rounds at the moment on booktube it is again a smut it's really short it's a novella everybody and their mother loves this it's rubbish it's basically a friends to lovers there is zero chemistry there the steam is shocking like there's no like how are you supposed to enjoy smut written about two people who clearly have no connection it's literally like reading about two people with no sex drive at all i don't understand how this was anybody enjoyed this i'm glad you did if you did more the power to you but um, it was not for me. I was bored the entire time. I was just like, I finished it because of how short it was. But I was like, really? Really? The chemistry is like two hot dogs slapping. Like, that's it. It's just like hot dogs slapping against each other. That was as good as it was. There was nothing. There was no chemistry whatsoever. I'm not even talking about it anymore because I'm mad about it. I gave it a two star. I wasn't giving it a one star. I wasn't offensive or anything, but it was just boring. The next book that I read is this savage song by ve schwab this is the monsters duology something something monsters duology um i read this for the ve schwab along i read it late but i did read it for the ve schwab along 
Um, so everyone else was enjoying it and I was thinking to myself, I'll enjoy it. I'm a little bit confused. I like the story. I like what was going on. I like the concept. I like the plot. It was more the writing style that I really didn't like. I read Addie LaRue. The thing is, the thing is, I don't understand V.E. Schwab because she's also Victoria Schwab as well. Schwab. So she writes middle grade, young adult and adult now. So I think that obviously her writing style is going to be changing all the time. I get it. I understand that. But I did not like the writing style in this. And I'm a little bit concerned about reading her future books. I own A Dark Shade of Magic and City of Ghosts is on its way to me. Um, so I will be getting a lot more of a taste for her writing style. And I'm intrigued to see about that because this was not for me in terms of writing. The plot is interesting. I will be reading the second book. I'm excited to read the second book. But because of how much I despise the writing style, I did give this a two star. Um, the plot's good, but it's cheesy. It's cheesy as anything, which is again, once, once again, to do with the writing style. I, I was literally just like, come on guys, this has got to be a joke. It's about monsters versus humans in a society where they have like a treaty and then the treaty's break broken and there's two main characters that we follow in a multi POV. Yeah, no, it wasn't for me, but the story was. So I am continuing. I'm very excited. I then read A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Um, I'm really annoyed at myself. Lauren said to me, download the audiobook off Audible because they've got like a whole cast. So I was like, okay, because the audiobook is free on script. Well, not free because you pay for script, but you know, it's on script. So I was like, okay, I'll buy it on Audible. I bought the wrong one. And I got to the end and I was like, what is Lauren on about? This has no cast. This was rubbish as an audio, not the actual book. I bought the wrong one. <laughs> So I didn't have that amazing experience that everyone else had with all the cast of characters and the background noise that I was told that I was having because I'm an idiot. So um, that was disappointing. I gave it a three star. The story was fine. The story is exactly like the movies. The movies are exactly like the story, whatever. It was exactly like it. So it was nothing new content wise for me. I'm pretty sure I read this story when I was a teenager, but I don't quite remember it. So it was nice to read it. Three star, it was good nothing blew me away i would like to read it again next christmas with the actual audio cast book i then read the vanishing stare by maureen johnson i said i read the truly tv series this um is the second one and i'm not going to tell you what's about because it'll spoil it but i really really enjoyed this one i gave this one a 4.5 as well it was really really enjoyable just as good as the first one I don't know which one's my favourite. Maybe this one. I really like the depth we took in this one. It like went that step further. I really love the fact that this mystery is drawn out over three books. Like it was so drawn out, but not in like a, oh, this took too long way. It was perfectly paced. Ugh. And these books are short. So, you know, 350 pages, but the, the words are spaced well. So it's a short book. As I said, the audiobooks are really short. It, it, it's perfection i want to give it a five star but there's something just holding me back you know just a little something i just want a touch more but they are so good and it is one of my favorite series i have nothing much to say on it other than if you haven't read it go read it it is mwah. i then read uh, always and forever lara jean this is the last book in the um to all the boys i've left before series by jenny han the first book I think I gave five stars, the second I think I gave four and I should not have. I gave this 2.5, which to be honest is more than I thought I was going to give it. This is the most gaslighting, terrible relationship I've ever read about. In the first book it was fine and then in the second book he started doing things that I was like that's disgusting. And the third book I'm even, I'm even more angry. Now obviously there is like a love triangle slash square in this story so i'm not going to tell you how it ends or anything like that but all i'm going to say is the men in this series one of them is great and one of them is gross and um i just i just cannot believe the way that this book portrays relationships like at one point okay i quote 
she'd done something something or she wanted something she went i'll have to be the perfect girlfriend for the rest of this week to make up for this and then proceeds to make a lot of cookies are we living in the 40s what the what the hell was this i am so angry like that was so gross and i just think all the men are trash so glad that series is over will not be reading that again because as much as i love the first book at five stars i'm pretty sure it was no no nada no i won't even be watching the films i'm mad i watched the first film but no i will not be continuing any of it it's so annoying to me that this is the route that it took that it made the characters the way they made the characters in the end i can't stand lara jean I cannot stand her. She needs to grow a backbone. First book, I love her. I, I literally can't, I, no, I'm not even talking about it. It's made me angry. I literally cannot talk about it anymore. I'm so upset. What is it with people ruining series with characters? Then I read Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Now, this has an average rating of 3.11 on Goodreads. This is hated by a lot of people. I understand why we are based in a school called Catherine house where when you go it's like a university not a school and um, when you go you do not have contact to anybody until your degree is up within three years but when you graduate basically the whole world is open to you um you'll have endless opportunities because everybody looks up to the people who've been to Catherine house because you've been through three years of no contact with the outside world there's a mystery in this book that um basically it's never explained the answer is never given to you ever you never it's an open end so you, people hate open endings me included but i knew it was gonna happen you're kind of just seeing a snapshot of the life of the school and Catherine House is like described as like this live being like the house is real and you can feel it through the book I'm getting chills I'm literally getting goosebumps talking about this book remembering it the way it made me feel the characters are drawn back to the house permanently and I felt this way about reading the book I was drawn back in I wanted to be in this setting with the house again the characters are weird and creepy and flawed the school is weird and the teachers are strange and peculiar. That is the only way to describe this book. And I can understand why people cannot stand it because there's no plot. Like, well, there is a plot, but there's no answer. There's no usual narrative where the end is like, woohoo, complete. Resolution. You're simply seeing a snapshot of three years of one student in this long living school. I adored it. I loved it. I loved the f weird open ending. I loved how strange and scary and spooky this book was. The things that happened, my mouth was just hanging open. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I adored it. I gave it a 4.5. The 0.5 is because at the middle, I just got the littlest bit bored. And I was like, oh, come on. And I struggled to pick it up for like a day or two. And I have not stopped thinking about it. I cannot wait to reread this already. And I only read it like six days ago. I think I finished it. Yeah, six days ago or something. I'm so blown away by what happened here. Um, I adore it. I adore it. It is so weird. You probably won't like it. If you're going to read this on my recommendation, be prepared because I'm not having you read this and then be like, I don't trust you anymore. Not everyone's going to like this. Actually, I would recommend this to nobody. I will never recommend this to anyone because I don't think anyone is going to like it. But me? Oh, it was like perfection. The next book that I read was Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman. This is a solitaire novella, so like a little spin-off from Solitaire. I actually DNF'd Solitaire. It was really boring to me. Um... But I knew that I've, I've read Heartstopper. I love Heartstopper. So I, I was going to pick this up anyway. Um, it's about Nick is moving to university. And Charlie basically causes an argument because he's going to miss him. Um, so you experience them have like relationship problems. I gave it a five star because I love Nick and Charlie. And Nick and Charlie will always be a five star in my mind. 
but it did make me realize that I like Nick and Charlie in graphic novel form and only graphic novel form because they're kind of boring people and their relationship is just bland like it is vanilla ice cream without the vanilla pods you know it's not even vanilla bean it's just vanilla um it's cute and i gave it a five star so you know i clearly loved it but i just mean that without the graphic novel with the pictures to entertain you the story is not a lot i this couldn't be more than a novella you know they are just very bland characters um there is like a little bit of multimedia in here like some texts and it does have the occasional photo um or graphic like graphic novel style photo in it i'm trying to find a picture for you so you know you do get the occasional picture in there but overall and text as well it just made me realize that nick and charlie are definitely graphic novel characters um not book characters still loved it still recommend it you do not need to read solitaire to read it because i dnf solitaire didn't like it and still love that so that is fine oh my god we are five minutes off an hour that i've been filming this so i need to speed up but we are on the last book go me and that is the hand on the wall by maureen johnson i finished this yesterday so this was the last read of 2020 and it was a great one i knew it would be this series is amazing this is the end of the it's not the end of the series because another book is coming out in june but this is kind of like the end of the trilogy of that murder mystery it is solved in this one and um, the next book i believe is about the future of stevie bell and the, what she will achieve later on um but this book kind of just ends the ellingham academy journey it was my least favorite of the series i gave this a four instead of a 4.5 also there is a love interest throughout the series and it's a lot of back and forth especially in this book that i was kind of like really do, you, do we need to keep doing this now um but that's such a small criticism compared to the rest of the book i loved it i loved the wrap-up i loved the way the mystery ended i did not i guessed the mystery end in vanishing stare of what was happening and then they confirm it and then they add more to it they're like oh that's not the end here's more and i love that give me more keep going so i loved it the writing style is fabulous i'm so glad i finished the series before the end of 2020 and read the entire series in one month if that doesn't show much i love it i don't know what does thank you to lauren for buddy reading that with me i'm gonna try and bribe her into reading the new release with me when it comes out in june she can't escape me that easy <laughs> but i really enjoyed buddy reading that with her and i would never have read all those books in one month if it wasn't for her so I'm very pleased with that but that is the reads of 2020 and two months i cannot believe how long that just took me you're not going to be watching this for an hour so i'm gonna have to edit that right down but if you did make it to the end props to you leave me leave me a random emoji leave me the most random emoji you can find I'm excited to see what you come up with but thank you so much for watching especially if you made it to the end i really appreciate it let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts are let me know your favorite book that you read at the end of 2020 and um let me know what your last read of 2020 was actually because i'd love to know what that was your end read if you've well you would have had it because it'll be uploaded after 2020 <laughs> and i shall see you in my next video thank you for watching bye Thank you.